Hi, this is Rob Farrow with the Open University UK and OER Hub. And this is a short video about openness and ethics. Um, there's a whole range of cultures, behaviours, practices and technologies in edu educational contexts that might be described as open, uh, such as access to education or access to research, educational materials, teaching methods, software, data sets and so on. Um, over the last decade or so, primarily in the form of MOOC and OER, the open education movement has expanded opportunities for education worldwide. But there's a widespread recognition that the shift to digitised, online and freely accessible learning resources can bring profound ethical challenges. So most people who advocate for open education do so because they believe it's the right thing to do. To improve access to education can be seen as a moral mission. People voluntarily invest time in promoting open education and making OER. And for many practitioners, the ethical dimensions of open education are absolutely crucial. Uh, and even if the goal is just a kind of pragmatic one, uh, such as to save institutions or students money, there remains a kind of normative dimension to this. Um, as openness increasingly enters the mainstream, there's also concern that the more radical ethical aspirations of the open education movement are becoming secondary. Uh, David Wiley, for instance, uh, encourages us to have a, a deeper understanding of open ethics in the form of an ethics of care rather than um, a set of duties. I tried to engage with some of these issues in a paper published in Open Praxis last year. And in it, I identify several principles which I argue are essential for thinking about our ethical responsibilities in the open. So let's take a look at them. Firstly, respect for autonomy. Something like treating people with respect and dignity, regardless of gender, age, race, sexuality, ethnicity, or other particularities. Secondly, to avoid harm and minimise risk. Full disclosure, or practising a kind of transparency about one's activities and intentions. Privacy and data security, including complying with relevant laws and institutional codes, but also thinking about what might be missing from them in the case of an emergent technology or situation. Integrity, acting honestly and in accordance with our moral principles. Independence, being resistant to conflicts of interest and external pressures. Informed consent, refraining from coercion and ensuring that everyone involved in educational activities understands their involvement and any associated risk. At least some of these may be familiar, not least because they are the basis of our research ethics and other institutional codes of practice. In the framework that combined with three normative domains derived from moral philosophy, and the idea is to create a tool that helps non-specialists to think more systematically about ethics and the implications of their activities. So why take this approach? Well, uh, one way of making sense of all this is to conceptualise openness as a move towards freedom. Um, because when we become more open, we remove barriers to activity. And this link to freedom makes it hard to come up with general rules about how to behave. And if you're working outside an institution, there's a need to be extra attentive and anticipate outcomes by reflecting on the kind of risks that can be involved. And even where institutional guidance is available, it may not reflect what's possible with open technologies. So as they say in Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. With openness comes a kind of increased responsibility. So I'd say that if you're an open practitioner, you need to have an even more attuned moral compass and think more deeply about ethics than those who can just follow established codes or rules. And this is the fundamental ethical challenge brought about by openness and the freedom it brings. If you'd like to know more about the approach taken, you can get in touch or you can check out the paper in Open Praxis, which is published open access.